we all know we get them in diving because they've been thrown away by gymnastics because they had injuries. And there have been so many phenomenal divers that have come to us, somebody sitting right there, um, as an injured gymnast who eventually had ongoing problems. And, and again, the bio, they may have had surgery, but the biomechanical flaws weren't identified, they treated the symptoms. Muscle weakness, scapula stabilizers, lumbar pelvic, we talked about triceps and juniors, not uncommon. Um, and actually, we, we were just talking about that before we got started, about somebody who's having a tricep problem now. We've actually seen divers who have who actually torn their triceps off of the tendon, the muscle off the tendon. Um, the stability training, it has to be diving specific, it has to be functional strengthening for the sport and for the way you like to coach. Um, should be done in an upright and inverted position and in the context of the rest of the body, not just isolating shoulder exercises. But one of the biggest things I see and what I think is one of the biggest causes of, of shoulder problems in divers is inadequate or inappropriately done preventative exercises. It's get them done and get, get on the boards. And I think more time has to be spent on the form. So you would rather have your diver do five really well-performed dives than 20 of garbage. I mean, the, the numbers aren't important, it's, it's how you do it. Um, full disclosure, this is my wrist brace. We have a prototype in Barcelona, actually, almost 20 years ago. But one of the things that we were thinking about, and wrist injuries are pretty common, and, but possibly, ultimately, shoulder injuries in junior doctors are coming from that because they can't hold their injuries, the forces get transmitted from wrist to elbow through the triceps, which aren't strong enough, and eventually, we see it in the shoulders. Maturational status. You should match the training to the DD. I mean, it, it shouldn't be, not every kid is the same. Not every kid is ready to do the same dive at the same age. And you've got to look at what they're, what they're prepared to do. And something that's just come out in, in our liter literature is that the attachment of the labrum in the shoulder, the, around the edge of the socket, is not mature until age 22. And when this study came out, it scared the crap out of shoulder surgeons because we're operating on teenagers and we're, the labor is being peeled off and we're putting it back. And there's a fair failure rate with that. No matter who's doing it, no matter how good a surgeon they are, some of them fail. And sometimes we don't know why they fail and we think this is the explanation. But one of the things that we've seen is the more years you die, the more injury, the more chance of getting, you, the chance of getting injured goes up. Um, and maybe with preventative treatment, preventative uh, therapy on prehabilitation for the scapulothoracic area, we can minimize that. And there are no male-female differences. We've, we've never seen that over the years, and there, there are peaks and valleys, and I just looked at um, the, num the divers that I've done, uh, I think I've done, I think the number was 12 divers in the last year and a half, and there were six males and six females. So the skill set, uh, again, that we should match the dive progression. Um, spatial orientation, that's why they go to training camps, that's got to be trained. Then we get to the psychosocial issues. Um, eating disorders have been with us since I've been with diving. Um, and, and they're a nightmare, and um, we've, we've had programs for that. I don't know if those programs are still, still being done. I suspect that they're not. Um, and then there's the issue of work ethic, and that, that becomes something that's, um, I, I, worry, I worry about talking about this, and then I figure, because as I get older, I tend to think about those kids. I think work ethic is very different now. And I wasn't, I was gonna dance around this, but um, I think that I see, uh, and I'm sure there are athletes there that are totally committed. I, I, don't, I don't doubt that. But overall, the sense that I've gotten over the years is that the work ethic of the athlete, not just in diving, but in sports, has changed. Um, I see that in the kids that, that I operate on, and it's what are you going to do to make my shoulder better? I'm going to restore your structure. If you're not going to work on your function, then you are not going to get better. I think that I'm not, I'm not implying for a minute that we should become the Chinese, where nothing is important other than the, the chosen sport. Um, and I think that life balance is important. I don't see the work ethic in diving that I used to. I think athletes overall have changed. I think coaching has changed. I think coaches are more concerned about being their diver's friend um, there are, and again, I, this is, I get the microphone so I get to tell you my biases. There aren't a whole lot of Ronald Bryans around. Who would, I mean, Ronald Bryan threw more Olympians off his team than most people who ever coach as Olympians. 
because of disciplinary reason. And I think that, that that was part of why Ron succeeded. Um, and again, this isn't just to talk about Ronnie. I, I think that um, the divers' willingness to work hard for what, what they're getting is different from what it was 20 years ago. But I'm old, and I can say that. Overall, I think the incidence of injuries is about the same. I don't think there are more shoulder injuries now than uh, what I was seeing uh, in the beginning of my career. I think there's more awareness of what's available. I think that we have more sensitive diagnostic tools. I think there are sports medicine docs that are better at looking at uh, sports injuries, not necessarily diving, but sports injuries in general. Um, we have MRI now, which we didn't have before. Um, and we have a higher level of sophistication um, with which to treat, whether that's rehabilitation, because people like Terry Robinson has been very sophisticated in his approach and his knowledge for how to rehabilitate and prehabilitate divers, or the actual surgical techniques that we're doing. I have some concerns. Um, something that I worked for 25 years to develop, um, a, a sports medicine program that was really the envy of most NGBs. Um, and people would come to me and, at, and ask me to help them model their sports medicine programs over um, the way we, we did ours. Um, that's gone. The sports medicine program in US diving doesn't exist anymore except for Terry Robinson. Um, if you're in Indianapolis, you're okay because there's something that's set up in Indianapolis. But the sports medicine program has been, been dismantled. Um, people that have an incredible, incredible fund of knowledge and desire um, to help divers are no longer involved in the sport because the decision has been made that there's no need for them. Um, that gives me concern. We used to do training camps where we would identify problems early, set up programs that were specific for the divers um, and to specific for their needs, bring in coaches and try to tell them what was going on. Unfortunately, they would then go back to their strength and conditioning coach at the major university who said, I know how to train football players, I'll just train your doctors the same way, and their injury rates went up every time that happened. I'm also particularly concerned about weed coverage because um, there is no more formal weed coverage, and uh, doctor, there's no, there are no more doctors going to diving meets unless they're in Indianapolis. Um, there are trainers that are being brought in who know nothing at all about the sport um, that are being paid now to cover for what volunteers were doing before and complaining that they have to work a four-hour shift. For those of you who know how I started, and I was, I was doing the doctoring and the trainering and the physical therapy part, um, you did what you did because you really loved to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm concerned that that's now wrong. And I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure where that's going to bring us. In the last 18 months, I've operated on the shoulders of five of the 22 designated members of the Olympic Performance Squad. That's a scary number. I don't know, I don't think other people have had surgery, and I know there are other people doing surgery, probably at least at the level that I am, if not significantly better than I do. Um, but I, I don't know all the injuries are out there, but this is a pretty high percentage. I know that injuries will occur in any sport and with any training regimen. Um, I do, however, think that the number of significant shoulder injuries in divers, especially junior divers, if we get them early enough, can be reduced with recommendations. So now to close, the traditional thinking, the inside the box thinking, has always been, here's the glenny humeral joint. That's not the case. There's the scapulothoracic joint, there's core stability, there's alignment. I just don't think diving coaches have put, put that all together. But the new paradigm is, inside the box is all of that. It's all connected. And if we avoid any part of that, our injuries are going to go up. With, with the changes in the medical care that we've Wow. Um, if this is ignored, I think things are going to get worse. I'm optimistic, however, that we can pretty much treat anything that comes along. Thanks for your time. This is for discussion. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever given a talk where things were open to the audience afterwards that I didn't learn something. Please. Well, we saw some rehabilitative exercises, and you mentioned rehabilitative exercises multiple times. Do you have a regimen that can be accessed? Um, no. Um, I, I, our, our program 
Um, on, on my website is um, there, there's a section that, is, that says for our patients. Um, and the drop down is a bunch of PDFs for um, exercises and, um, and a philosophy of how the shoulder should be approached as far as rehabilitation that applies to rehabilitation. Because most of those actually, that, there's a whole section that's on rehabilitative exercises that are really pre-flotation. It's not, it's not <coughs> post -op. They're all about post-op protocols are on there, but that's, that's, um, but actually what's, as a result of, of putting this together, um, there'll, there'll probably be something, I can't tell you when, um, but um, what I decided was that that was gonna come up and that the responsibility was gonna be mine to come up with a program that people could just access on the website. So um, I can't tell you when, but I'm feeling a sense of responsibility to get it done. And Terry, you don't want to hear that because you're going to be involved. Yes? In the beginning, you talked about the importance of the shoulder blade. <coughs> the shoulder blade. Uh, in the, the shoulder. beginning, you talked about the importance of the shoulder blade. You kind of went into it a little bit more. What, uh, how, would, how would I go about strengthening that in the athletes? And, and you were talking about the importance of it. Yeah, well, some of, the some of the exercises that I showed are specifically that. I mean, we, we talked a little bit about bone mowers, which is basic. The, the key is you've got to make sure the shoulder blade's in position, in the right position. So it can't, not everybody, get <coughs> the shoulder blade pulled down and back. I mean, it has to be, the program has to be taught by somebody who understands shoulder mechanics and make sure, make sure that things are lined up. It's almost like asking a diving coach, tell me the steps to get somebody off the board put this side in clean it. You know, you've, you've got to make sure that the person watching it understands the mechanics of what has to be accomplished. So it's not just, you know, in the past, it's been, do the rotator cuff exercise, do your rubber, rubber tubing, so the kids would just bang out external rotation and scaption and, and then go. So the whole thing with that is there's really not a whole lot of reason to do specific rotator cuff exercises unless you're engaging with scaption as well. So, I mean, so there was, we, we, um, I showed, the lawnmower exercise, I showed robbery, and then you know, there's, there's robbery one, which is you know, those down here, and then two, you know, those up here. But as I said, a, a lot of them, if on the, on the website is, is a program, not specific to divers, but there will be, because it's a whole diving section on the website. Um, I, I will be getting it done, but if you were to take that to that program and philosophy to a therapist, I would hope that they would be sophisticated enough to just translate that and make, put in pictures to it. So when you're looking at like incline bench or bench, bench pressing, um, in a sense, that's actually strengthening the shoulder blade area. No, no. I, I, cannot, I cannot think of an exercise that has done more that has less value than bench pressing the dive time. What does your diver do on the board or in the air that that replicates? No. It's aesthetic. It's aesthetic. It's aesthetic. Well, it's it's making them, it's making them bigger in the front. It's making them tighter in the front, and it's pulling the shoulder blade out of position. But they look good. <laughs> and I'm not being critical of you because I've gone through this with strength and conditioning coaches. We've got somebody in one of our local high schools who has every single athlete at that school, it's a big it's a big broken school, on the same program. The football players, men's volleyball, women's volleyball, swimming, the, the women's soccer team is doing bench press, figure that out. They went, they, they, I mean, I think they straight in conditioning and they one book. Remember us. Yes. Yes, I uh, actually sit on the fitness sports medicine committee, and um, my background was in USA swimming as a financial team position, both in water swimming, and though I don't announce this in public very often, master swimming. <laughs> <laughs> and I would share Ben's comment about the sports medicine um, back backup that your athletes have, having worked this past year with several different events. And I was expecting, of course, like what well, we had steep rate operative results, but operative results represent failure. In 